it reports Wednesday and you like it? So I do. I mean, this is a stock that if you held it before the pandemic, you've lost 77 percent. So the hype has pretty much been taken out of this stock, but it is the world's largest charging network. And EV, uh, the, the demand for EV charging is certainly not going away. Um, the recent um, uh, Made in America EV Charging Infrastructure Act definitely supports ChargePoint. So there are things that are going to support these, but all of these names are fraught with risk right now because in the short term, they're losing money, and ChargePoint is, not, is, is, is one of those. Um, so you have to have kind of a stomach for risk in order to get to the longer term where there will be continued demand in this space. So I just want to underscore that. Sure. I want to hit plug before I bring you in, Phil, uh, because it's a very similar story. It's almost deja vu-like. So you might say, well, these are two different companies. Okay, well, why is the stock acting the same? Plug also is down about the same from its 2021 peak. This is more hydrogen fuel cell technology. They report after the bell tomorrow. Gina, they're also up 20% this year. Why do you like it? So Plug is interesting. They are forecasting that they're going to hit uh, break even this year. Now, they've also missed eight out of the last eight earnings. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, but wow. the reality is, is that the actual um, green hydrogen, so this is a hydrogen fuel cell company, very different. It's very much a pure play in the green space. Um, but their generation costs are going down. So their margins are actually improving, whereas ChargePoint, their margins are being squeezed. Yeah, right. These... So they're two very different companies. The, but the crazy thing, Phil, is the stocks are acting pretty much the same. I mean, I, I it's almost like it traces the kind of like hype and reality cycle that we've been right. through for the last couple of years with kind of EVs or alternative fuel technology. Gina's right. These have great tailwinds long term. But when do they pay off? I mean, you, she points out that plug power is going to get to break even. ChargePoint's still losing money. Wow. There's no doubt that ChargePoint is in the right area for the growth that's coming. But how do you extrapolate where they are right now to where they're going to be in 2030? We know there are going to be more chargers, but do we? Do you have any confidence that you can say, I think this company will make X, Y, Z by 2025, 2026, and whatever it might be? Tesla opening up or, or, or signaling that it's going to open up some of its right. chargers uh, to, to more cars as well. Gina, what would you say in response to that? So here's the, the, the word here that matters is network. And the reason that ChargePoint, yes, they are absolutely losing money, um, but the inflationary pressures on the expense side of their balance sheet will eventually ease and they continue to grow their revenues. And network matters. And this is the largest charging network right now in the world. So if you're going to bet on anyone, you're going to bet on the company that's built out the largest network. Right? Gina's so right getting that, from here to there Gina, is, you're is right a long that, way. Gina, you're right that network matters. I will counter, though, that most of the people I know who use, if they're not charging at home, most people charge at home, if they are using a charger, there is no brand loyalty here. It is strictly, do they have the right chargers in the right locations? I've used ChargePoint when I've had an EV. I've also used other ones. It strictly depends on the location. Now, they have the largest network. She's right about that. But they don't have brand loyalty. I've never heard an EV owner say, I'm looking for a charge point. Right. They, they don't <laughs> yeah. care. Electricity is electricity. I'll take it where I can get it. Gina? I, I totally agree with that, but I just want to have the last word here. <laughs> it, location does matter. If you have the largest network okay. and you're betting the odds, then chances are you're charging on a charge point because they're everywhere. All right. Let me quickly hit for solar, then we'll kind of come back to this with Rivian. FSLR <laughs> has actually been a very differently behaved stock, and maybe it makes sense because it's a very different segment of the market. We're talking about residential solar in large part. The stock is up almost up almost 70 percent from late 2021. Hard to find any stock that's true of right now. It just hit a new all time high last month. Gina, you like this combo of higher demand and falling solar prices? Yeah, I mean, this is but this is also a stock that because of uh, just demand growing, the uh, Inflation Reduction Act also helped. Tax credits are driving further demand. This is a company that's in backlog right now. They're actually having to convert backlog into, um, uh, you know, into sales. So that revenue growth is there. It's known. Um, and they're having to make investments into further incremental capacity in order to meet that demand. So there's going to be some drag in the, in the short term on their cash because of those investments. But the long term, you can actually see sort of the path for demand there. Sure. And it's a unique kind of, uh, you know, American story as well. It's got a lot of tailwinds. We'll see how they do in earnings. We'll pivot back then, uh, Gina, after those three buys to your one bail today, which is Rivian. I think we've talked about it before. I mean, as our audience knows, the stock is down almost 90 percent from the highs around 130. They reached shortly after going public in 2021. It is up about 5 percent this year. I mean, why not take a chance here, Gina? 
Well, the thing with Rivian is this is an $80,000 ticket uh, item. So this is an item that you have to really want to buy. Um, right now, we are going into a slowdown. There's no question that, that at least consumers are starting to think twice about making these really big p ticket purchases. And they're, they're going up against, you know, the Ford F-150. Um, and, and they're oddly targeting consumers that are new to EV ownership and new to truck ownership. That just seems like a really small market and one that's going to be shrinking if spending $80,000 is something you have to think twice about. But they've got the SUV also, right? I mean, they I don't know. You have the SUV. I'm going to counter Gina with this. I like this. It needs to be a recurring Amazon. thing here. <laughs>